All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is what is debate? This outline with the guy with the little bomb getting ready to blow up. That's what we're going to talk about first today. All right, I'm going to pull this down. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. So what is debate? That's the first question we want to be able to answer, just because otherwise we're going to be lost as we go throughout this semester. So what is debate? Track this sheet. Everybody got it? Okay, so debate is the practice, the practice of comparing and contrasting ideas. Debate is comparing and contrasting ideas. Debate's not about trying to make the other person look bad. Debate's not about trying to make yourself look good or sound smart. Debate's about the ideas, comparing and contrasting the ideas. So the focus of the debate is going to be on the ideas that are going on in the room when we're in a debate round. So it's important to kind of remember every time we're talk in club, every time we are out at tournaments, that we aren't really arguing with the other person across the table. We're talking about the ideas. And that makes it a lot easier because when somebody says, I disagree with you, they aren't saying, Jacques, I don't like you. They're saying, Jacques, I think the idea you have is wrong and here's the reasons I have that I think that idea is wrong. And so it's the same as if we're in a football game and I hit the guy on the other team. It's not that I don't like him. He's on the other team and that's just part of the game. Mm -hmm. So we have to think of debate in the same way, that we're not out to get the other team. We're out to get the ideas that the other team is trying to bring up. So that's the first thing. The goal of authentic debate is the search for truth. Search for truth. This is important. We're not just in a debate round, like we said, to try to fight with each other or to try to make the other side sound dumb. We're really there to try to find out what is the best answer. And a lot of times we don't know the best answer. I mean, we had the resolution that we had up, the topic that we had up when you all walked in, and it was that Psy Academy should have a less stringent dress code. And there's good arguments that Psy Academy maybe should, and there's good arguments that Psy Academy maybe shouldn't. And maybe it should even be more stringent than it is. Those are arguments that exist out in the world, and there's not necessarily a right answer. So when we're searching for truth, we're trying to find the best answer that we can get to. And we're not using a big T truth, we're using a little T truth. So this is kind of like the best answer for right now. So it may not be the most precise answer that we can get, but it's the best answer that we can get for right now. So those are the things, that's what debate is and what our goal is. The next thing we want to talk about is not just why are we here, but kind of what debate is about in a competitive debate sense. So what debate is not going to teach you? Just kind of cover a few things so that you don't come into debate thinking, oh, here's all these great things I'm going to learn, and then you're disappointed and say, Mr. Wolfson, I didn't learn how to beat my parent in a quarrel. So notice the word I use there is quarrel and not argument. Do you know the difference between a quarrel and an argument? What do you think the difference is? Ricky, what do you think the difference is? I'm not quarrel my fight, so... Yeah, me too. Oh, like a brawl? Yeah, so like a, it's like a brawl. Renita, what do you think it is? Uh, or Renata, I'm sorry. I actually don't know what quarrel means. It's okay. So, I, so Ricky's example is really good. So often we hear... So think about arguments that we have with our parents. Our parents say, no, you can't go to that movie. And we say, but I want to. And they say, no, you can't. And I say, yes, I want to. And we just kind of go back and forth. And usually the ultimate reason our parents say that we can't go to the movie is a lot of times, well, I'm the parent and I'm the boss. End of story. Or why, can't I, why do I have to wear this uniform at Psy Academy? And Mr. Markovitz says, because I'm the principal and we set a rule that if you're at Psy Academy, you're going to wear a uniform. Well, with all you're doing is just going back and forth and saying no, yes, no, yes, no. But you're not actually getting anywhere in the discussion. That's just a quarrel. So those are the kind of fights that we have all the time. If you're having a rational argument where you're saying, well, here's the reason I think that we should go to this movie. Maybe I think this is why we should go to this place for vacation as a family this year, and your mom or dad or your sibling says, well, I think we should go to this place, and here's my reasons. Suddenly, we're not quarreling. We're not just saying, I want my way, you want your way, and we're just going to bash heads. But the difference is now we're actually trying to come to some agreement where we can all be happy about it. So that's the big thing. So we're not here to learn how to beat our parents in a quarrel. We're not here to teach ourselves or to try to remember that we're always right. We're not always right. There's going to be a lot of things we're going to learn this year. There's going to be a lot of things we're going to learn over the rest of our lives where we'll realize, oh my goodness, I can't believe I thought this way. But we'll look back and we'll say, I'm glad I learned that because now I know that there's going to be other situations in my life where I'm not always right. And I'm going to be more willing to listen to what other people say. 
And the last thing, debate's not going to teach you is handwriting skills. Because once you get into a debate round, people are talking a little faster, people are going over a lot of material, and you've got to be able to try to keep track of those things with notes. Now you're going to learn to take notes, but you're not going to learn to get your handwriting better. So if your goal in debate was to be a better handwriter, then you should probably quit right now. But I don't think that's why my viewer here. So I think we're in good shape. So why should you debate? First thing, and I think all of you touched on it earlier when we talked about why you're here, is for communication skills. We're trying to figure out how to get up in front of any group of people and be able to share the things that we think are important. And that's a really key skill that we could have in our lives. So learning how to talk to any audience, no matter what that audience wants to hear from us, is a really valuable skill. Second, it's beneficial for college. Right? Ricky, like you said, the colleges are really, look at it on a transcript or look at it on your resume when you apply to college and say, wow, this person's a debater. And that says something about an individual who's a debater. But it also is a bunch of skills you're going to learn debating. You're going to learn to research. You're going to learn to write, as Renata said. You're going to learn to think critically. You're going to be more comfortable arguing with people in class or your family or anybody else. Those are the sort of things that we're going to learn in debate. And these are all skills that prepare us for college. Because when you're hanging out in your dorm with all of your new friends at college, you're going to have conversations about all sorts of topics. And you'll want to feel comfortable being able to say, well, Jock, here's why I think the way I do. And you'll be able to have those kind of conversations and be totally comfortable in them. Another thing is you're going to become more informed. The topic we're going to be talking about for the first two months, so this semester when, we talk, when we're debating, is going to be United States drug policy. And we're going to be looking at whether it should be treated as a health care issue or whether it should be treated as a criminal issue. This is something you probably haven't done a ton of research on in your spare time. You haven't sat down and said, hey, Mom and Dad, I want to write a report on the United States, whether or not we should treat our drug problem as a health care issue. You probably haven't thought about that so very deeply before, but we're going to spend a lot of time thinking about that. So you're going to be more informed about lots of different issues over the course of the year. Also, you're going to meet a lot of friends. So you're going to get to know each other well. You're going to get to know people who we compete against at tournaments well. And you're going to get to know people all over the country who are debating. And even if you don't get to know them here, when you get to college, you're going to meet people who are also debaters. And you're going to be able to say, oh, here's what I debated in high school. And you'll be able to have those kinds of conversations. Because the topic we're debating is the topic they're debating in California, and in Washington State, and in Illinois, and in New York, and everywhere across the country. So when you get to college, no matter where you went, anybody who did Lincoln-Douglas debate will have debated the exact same topic that you debate. So those are really good ways to kind of get to know people once you get to college. And you're going to build confidence. You'll be comfortable standing up in front of any group of people. And finally, you're going to have fun. Now, I know sometimes that seems a little crazy. The debate is going to be fun. It may not sound right off the bat like it's as much fun as other stuff. But in reality, debate is a lot of fun. And you get to test out your mental mettle. So whether or not your mind is as strong as you'd like it to be. And you get to test it out against other people in a really friendly environment. Sure, it's competitive. But at the same time, everybody's there to try to help everyone else learn. What are the things that debate's going to teach you? You're going to learn research skills. You're going to learn writing skills. You're going to learn critical thinking. This is being able to take a complex set of topics and boil them down to figure out what's important so that you can have conversations with people so that when you're writing papers in high school or in college or even if you decide to go to law school or graduate school you'll be more comfortable writing those kinds of papers. And you're going to learn rhetoric. Now rhetoric is how to make an argument using speech. So you're going to learn how to formulate words to convince other people of the things that you believe. You're going to also learn logic and persuasion. So you'll know whether or not the things that somebody else says in a classroom make sense, whether those things follow in a logical sequence. And you'll know how to line up your arguments or the positions you take in class so that it's persuasive to other people in the classroom. And lastly, you're going to learn how to argue without quarreling. So you're going to learn how to, instead of having the argument where you say yes, the other person says no, and it's yes, no, yes, no, you'll say yes because of these reasons. And then the other person will have to either come up with good reasons or they may be more willing to compromise. And so you're going to learn how to become a much better arguer in that sense. So, John. Right, will there ever be a point when you agree and disagree? Absolutely. There's going to be lots of situations where you may agree with what the other person's saying, but you'll say, but in this case, here's why this situation is unique. And so you, maybe you'll say, well, in general, I think that we should treat our drug policy in the United States as a health care issue. But there's a unique situation where maybe it's a person who's bringing over large quantities of drugs from another country or hurting other people with them. And you say, well, the drugs themselves maybe we're going to treat as a health care issue. But at the point gang members shoot somebody over the drugs, we're not going to just treat that as a health care issue. We're going to treat that as a criminal issue because once the guns got involved. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of times where you'll say, I agree with you on 99.9%. 
But that 0.1% is actually a lot bigger than we think it is. Very good question. So, how does debate work? We have what's called a resolution. The resolution is the focus of the debate round. So when we get into a debate round, we're going to have a resolution, and that's a set of, it's usually a sentence, and it tells us what we're going to talk about for the debate round. And it's really important that we remember the resolution throughout all the time we're debating, because we don't want to start talking about things that aren't part of the debate round. It's kind of like showing up at a basketball game with your football. And you say, well, I'm ready to play. And they say, well, but you're here for the wrong game. And so if you get in the round, and you're not talking about the resolution, you're focusing on the wrong thing. So that's the first key. <clears throat> there are two sides in every debate. We have the affirmative team, who's required to affirm or uphold the resolution. And we have the negative team, <clears throat> who's required to negate or to reject the resolution. This is really important for us to remember. It's going to be something we'll talk about a lot. The focus of the debate round is the resolution. The affirmative team upholds that resolution, and the negative team attempts to reject or to negate that resolution. So if the resolution said that we should have candy for breakfast, the affirmative team will say candy for breakfast. The negative team will say either candy for some other meal or candy not for breakfast. At the end of the day, though, the negative team has to say no candy for breakfast. Because if the negative team and the affirmative team say candy for breakfast, then the affirmative team is going to win. Because the focus of the round is whether or not we should have candy for breakfast. So are there any questions on what we are doing here? What's debate? No questions. Makes perfect sense.